Hi friends! Today I'm going to be re reviewing the film Run, starring Sarah Paulson and Kira Allen, written by Seb Ohanian and directed by Anish Changji. Hi friends! Welcome back to my channel, Tea Critiques, but you can call me Tia. As you guys know, I love, love horror movies. My favorite kind of horror movies are ghost stories and haunted houses and demon possessions because I just find that those ones are the scariest. But I understand that horror is a broader than that. There are subgenres such as psychological thrillers and slasher films. So, you know, if it gets my heart racing, if it's full of adrenaline and suspense, I'll probably be reviewing it on my page. So if you're into that kind of thing, subscribe below so you don't miss any of my future videos. The first section of this video will be spoiler free so that people who haven't seen the film can still hear what I gotta say about the film. And then near the end of the video, I'll be giving a little spoilers because I like to discuss the ending of films. I feel like endings are really important. They can make or break a film. And so I will definitely be talking about the ending, but don't worry, I will warn you guys when I'm getting to that spoiler part of the film. Or the review. So let's get into Run. Um, it's as I mentioned earlier, it's written and directed by Seb Ohanian and um, Anish Achanji. I hope I'm saying his last name right. Um, they also wrote and directed the film Searching, which is another film I really enjoyed and I definitely recommend. Um, so they clearly know how to tell a story and know how to direct a film, and they proved it through their second film, Run, which I absolutely loved. The movie stars one of my favorite actresses, Sarah Paulson. Um, she's in American Horror Story, and that's a show I really enjoyed. And she proves to be a compelling actress through her ability to play multiple characters on that show. She knows how to play sinister characters, you know, strange characters, haunted characters, evil characters. So she's really, you know, versatile. And she, so I kind of knew with her being in the film was probably going to be a solid film. This film also stars a new and up and coming actress named Kara Allen. I haven't seen any of her other stuff. Um, I don't know if this is her first feature film. I quickly grew to appreciate her as an actress and she plays her role exceptionally well. So let's get into the synopsis of the film. On Rotten Tomatoes, the literal synopsis is, an isolated teen discovers her mother's sinister secret. And yeah, that pretty much sums up the synopsis of the film in like seven words, <laughs> but I will give just a little bit more than that. She is no ordinary teen. Chloe, who is played by Alan, is, has a a heap of medical issues and disabilities. At the beginning of the film, it actually gives a list of her medical issues and her disabilities, which are included but not limited to asthma, diabetes, and paralysis. What is even more unique about this character is that Kiara Allen, who plays Chloe, is actually a wheelchair user in real life. And apparently, this is the first film in 70 years to cast an actual disabled actress to play a lead. So kudos to Sev and Anish for making that decision because Kiera Allen does such a wonderful job and proves why actual disabled people should be playing these roles because it's true, it's authentic, and it's just the right thing to do. Chloe and her mother Diane live in a small town and their house is like in the middle of nowhere so when the synopsis says an isolated teen, it literally means isolated. She also doesn't seem to have much of a social life. She is homeschooled, but she doesn't even have a cell phone, she doesn't have a laptop, the computer is in like the living room so she has to you know come down the stairs to use it and so she's very isolated and very excited to go to college she's been waiting to hear back from these colleges she wants to go live on campus and just get out into the world so this is a movie about a mother's love but a mother's like deluded love it's like crossing the line between parenting and like suffocation um obviously this film is an exaggerated version of that her mother's strictness escalates as you know, and becomes more sinister as more secrets are revealed. And this movie wastes no time getting into the drama. I mean, 15 minutes into the film, Chloe's already suspicious of her mother and is trying to find out the truth. And those scenes are like full of suspicion, I mean, <laughs> suspicion, obviously, full of suspense, adrenaline. Um, this movie is definitely a roller coaster ride. This movie is like, go, 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 go. Um, it wastes no time. It does not hold back. There are scenes of this movie that are just long drawn out shots that are so full of suspense that I was literally at the edge of my seat. Like, 
freaking out. Um, you know, I have anxiety, so <laughs> these scenes just drive me crazy. Uh, there are also scenes in this movie where Chloe does not have use of her wheelchair and she's literally dragging herself across the floor and it is so painful to watch. And to know that Kira Allen is actually disabled and so when she's going through this, she's actually, you know, struggling to get across the floor just makes those scenes more grueling to watch. And Kiera Allen is just an exceptional talent. She gives such a raw and authentic performance. This girl deserves all the roses. I know that's not for roses, that's for money, but I don't know how to really toss roses. But yeah, she deserves all the praise. Back to the movie. Is it scary? No, it's not meant to be scary. It is a psychological thriller, but it is exactly that. It is full of thrills, it is full of adrenaline, it is full of suspense, and it's a roller coaster ride. It is go, go, go full of anxiety so and like the mother is just like creepy af so yes it might not be a scary movie but it is a psychological thriller and it's one of the best i've seen in a long time another reason that i loved this film was because chloe is such a fighter even though she is disabled even though she's in a wheelchair even though she's under the control of her mother she is not a victim i mean she is a victim of her mother's abuse and control but she does not play a victim if that makes sense at the beginning of the film, Diane is at like a homeschool association association meeting and she says something like, Chloe is the most capable person I know. And then the movie goes on to prove just that. She is capable. She's able to fight for her life. She's not gonna let her disability stop her. She's not gonna let her fact the fact that she's in a wheelchair stop her. She's not gonna let the fact that her mother is like so like scary and evil and creepy stop her from fighting for her life. She is a warrior. She is a bad bitch. And, you know, she is just the prime example of a true heroine. She's also incredibly smart and uses her wit to, you know, outdo her mother. And she just keeps fighting. And I just really appreciated, you know, the, the choice to for of Seb and Anish to create this character. Kudos to them again because... It just, the whole film just delivers. Of course, Paulson is incredible in the film. Like I've mentioned, she's really good at playing sinister, kind of evil, deluded characters. I don't know if any of you have watched the show Ratchet on Netflix, but I highly recommend it. She plays, a, yet again, another kind of sinister, evil, or like kind of deluded character. Um, so yeah, Sarah Paulson obviously delivers. So my rating of the film is 4.5 out of 5. Like I said, I really enjoyed it. It was such a good time. I've already kind of detailed why I loved it so much, and so I definitely recommend you watch the film. But now, guys, I'm going to get into some spoilers. So if you haven't watched the film, go watch the film, come back and watch the end of this video, and comment below what you think about it. But yes, I'm just warning you, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers ahead. Okay, let's get into some spoilers. So this film is about Munchausen by proxy, which is when it's a condition in which a caregiver, you know, makes up an illness or causes illness or injury to the person they are caring for. It is very obvious to me that that's what this movie is about just based on the trailer so that was not a big reveal to me um, but even though you you know it's predictable that sh this is that's what the movie is about um, there's still so much suspense in the film and I don't think that the film was necessarily trying to keep that a secret or make it like this big reveal because like I said 15 minutes into the film, Chloe's already suspicious of her mother, and so it's not really this big shocking reveal. But I still enjoyed the process that Chloe went through in finding that out and discovering her mother's truths. It's still so full of suspense, and even though you know the outcome, like I said, it's all the feels. The big twist is that Chloe is not Diane's real daughter. So, at the beginning of the film, Chloe, I mean, Diane's at the hospital. She gave birth to a child who clearly seems like she's premature and is an incubator. You obviously assume throughout the film that Chloe is that child that was in the incubator, but you then find out that actually that child died and that Diane stole Chloe from the hospital, probably very shortly after that happened. And finding that out just makes Chloe's mother more deluded more sinister, more evil. So even though some parts of the film were predictable, they still gave you a big shock and reveal, which I appreciated because I didn't see that coming. Now let's get into the ending of the film. So obviously Chloe gets away from her mother. She escapes. 
there's this whole big shebang at the hospital and Chloe's mother, Diane, ends up in prison. It jumps seven years and Chloe is going to the jail to visit her mother. Her mother is looking real haggard in a hospital bed and Chloe, who is still in a wheelchair and mostly paralyzed, she does sometimes walk with a cane, but it's still a struggle for her. So she's still feeling, dealing with the effects of what her mother put her through. Um, so she's in, the, she's in the, the jail talking to her mother. She's telling her mother about her life, which is how the viewers find out about her life. She's now married. She has a child. She works in her dream job at a medical position. It doesn't really say what, but she's in the medical field, which was, was her dream. She's really close to her real parents. And so she's telling, she's telling um, Diane all of this, which it seems through what she's telling her that she goes and visits her on the regular because, you know, it doesn't seem like she's just now telling her. Um, so clearly she goes and visits Diane a lot. And so while you're watching the scene, you're like, why is she visiting this woman? Why is she calling her mother? Why is she there? But then at the end, just before she leaves, she spits out some pills. And it's the same pills that Diane has been giving Chloe her whole life. And she's like, it's time to take your medicine or something like that. Um, and so clearly, you know, she's getting her revenge. That is what the ending is about. She's getting her revenge. She's taking the control away from her mother and now she's in control of her mother's life. She's probably made her mother paralyzed and dealing with the same issues that she's dealt with. And I did like that. I did like the whole revenge spiel. What I would have preferred a little bit is, you know, she tells her mother about her life and she tells the viewers about her life, but I would have liked to have seen it because the whole movie is her trying to get away from her mother. And I mean, the movie's literally called Run and she's trying to get away, get away. And it's so full of suspense and like all you want is for this girl to just get away. And then when you find out that that's not even her mother, like all you want is her to be reunited with her real parents. But we don't get to see that. We just get to be told. And I think it would have been nice to see her out in the world away from her mother. I mean, it's just, it seems like she's with her mother throughout the whole film trying to get away and then it ends with her back with her. And although it's different now, the relationships have been like flipped, I still think it would have benefited if we got to have seen her out in the world, just being a mom, being a wife, being a daughter. Um, but hey, whatever, it could have, it still works. You get to, you, at least you know that her life is, you know, pretty solid without Diane. Also, can we talk about the fact that it's only been seven years and Chloe has her life just like figured out? I mean, she's only like 23, 24 now, I'm assuming. And you know, she's got the husband, she's got the kid, she's got the dream job. I mean, I'm not saying it's not possible, but I'm just like, okay, girl, good for you, cool toes, high five, you know, like seven years and she's done it all. Which I think is a testament to the fact that she did not waste no time. Like once she was out of, you know, her mother's control, she just like skyrocketed, which is good for her. But I also think that the fact that she still goes back and sees her mother and still wants to get revenge shows that her mother still technically kind of still has control over her. You know, if she just cut ties with her and just moved on, I think that would have been, you know, her just being like, I'm out, I'm done. But the fact that she still goes back means that she still kind of has an attachment there that she, you know, can't get rid of. So that's that on that. Like I mentioned earlier, I give this movie a 4.5 out of 5. I loved it. It was a good time, full of, you know, adrenaline and suspense and you know anxiety inducing and all those things heartbeat boom 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 so i definitely recommend this film and if you've seen this film please comment below and tell me what you thought about it tell me what you thought about the ending tell me what you thought about what i said all right i don't know what this is